Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice homemade equation. We have 2x times the square root of 1 minus x squared, and that equals x squared plus x minus 3 fourths. And we're going to be solving for x values. So I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. For my first method, I want to get rid of the radical. So the easiest way to do that is by squaring both sides. If you square both sides, we get 4x squared multiplied by 1 minus x squared. The radical disappears. And on the right hand side, we have something like a plus b plus c squared. I can use the formula a squared, b squared, c squared, and then 2ab, 2ac, and then 2bc. Awesome. Now let's go ahead and simplify this as much as possible and see if we can solve the resulting quartic. Okay. We got 4x squared minus 4x to the fourth power equals x to the fourth power plus 2x cubed. So I got these two. And now I need to add these two like terms. They like each other. That's going to give me minus 1 half x squared because that's 1 minus 3 halves, right? And then we have the minus 3 over 2x. And then finally, 9 over 16. Awesome. Since x to the fourth is more positive on the right-hand side, we can go ahead and put everything on the right-hand side. That's going to give us 5x to the fourth plus 2x cubed. I'm going to bring in a 4x squared. That's going to give me minus 9 over 2x squared. 4 plus 1 half is 9 halves. And then we have the minus 3 halves of x plus 9 over 16 equals 0. Nice. This is like a full cortic, right? But the presence of 16 is problematic. Also, the coefficient of x to the fourth power. Kind of a lot of problems to deal with, right? You can proceed in a couple different ways. For example, you can divide everything by 5 to get a monic and then try to solve it. Or you can multiply by 16 to get rid of the fraction and try to solve it that way. Maybe rational root theorem is going to help you. I say maybe because we don't necessarily know if there are any rational roots. But if there are, uh, they should work with the constant term and the leading coefficient. Make sense? There's something called the rational root theorem. Definitely, I recommend you to look into it. It's a really nice, uh, powerful property if there are any rational solutions. But guess what? In this case, there aren't any. Let me tell you that, okay? So you don't have to waste your time. So what do we do? We could use the quartic formula or we could use the second method. As you can see, the first method is super painful. That's why it is called the first method. Okay, great. Now here's the second method. And the first method is also called no pain, no gain. It's a cliche, but it's valid. So let's see how we can solve this problem in a different way dramatically different way because that's what the problem is intended for. Now, I told you that this is a homemade equation, but I've seen similar problems before. I, so I kind of got the idea and you'll see, you can come up with these kinds of questions very easily. If you don't know the idea behind it, yes, it may be hard to solve. But if you look at the term on the left-hand side carefully, you're hopefully going to realize that it's not coming out of nowhere. There's a reason why we have it. So let's take a look. First, what is this? Check this out. I'll go ahead and square this expression. And that's going to give me a squared plus b squared plus 2ab. Do you see what I'm talking about? Yes, that's what I'm trying to get at. Now we're going to go ahead and cancel out the x squared. And then we're going to end up with the following square root of 1 minus x squared plus x quantity squared is equal to 2x times square root of 1 minus x squared plus 1. Now, since I'm after this, right, because that's what I have on the left hand side of my equation, let's go ahead and isolate this 
by subtracting one from both sides. And let me go ahead and put this first. That's going to equal this expression minus 1. So it's going to be the square root of 1 minus x squared plus x and then quantity squared minus 1. You get the idea? We subtract 1 from both sides. Nice. Now we'll make it nicer. So let's go ahead and now replace the radical on the left with this. So we get square root of 1 minus x squared plus x quantity squared minus 1 equals x squared plus x minus 3 fourths, which was on the right hand side. Remember, there was the radical on the right left hand side. We replaced it with this perfect square minus 1. And then on the right hand side, we had the quadratic. So far, so good. If this is not good enough, let's go ahead and add one to both sides. And then we get x squared plus x plus 1 minus 3 fourths, which is 1 fourth. And now we can go ahead and write the right hand side as x plus 1 half squared. Very nice, right? I told you, I told you that we were going to make it nicer. So what does that mean? Uh-oh, the parentheses disappeared. We're going to go ahead and consider two cases. So you have to think about it this way. If a squared equals b squared, either a is equal to b or a is equal to negative b. This just comes from the fact that when you square negative b, you also get b squared. Or you can uh, approach it with difference of two squares. Subtract b squared, factor it, and you'll get there. So here's what I'm talking about. Either the expressions under the squares are equal or one of them is equal to the opposite of the other. Make sense? Let's consider this first case first. So I'm going to call this first case and call this second case. Here, notice that x cancels out. Isn't that nice? Super nice. Okay, now we get the following. Square both sides and you'll get the solutions. 1 minus x squared is equal to 1 fourth which means x squared is equal to 3 fourths and x is equal to plus minus root 3 over 2. Yeah, that's how I make it. Normally, people make it the other way around. Okay, so those are the x values. Are they both valid? Think about it because we're about to look at the second case. So this was the first case. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second case. Second case is where this expression on the left equals the opposite of the expression on the right-hand side. You just negate it. Of course, x's do not cancel out, but that's okay. We can put the negative x, I mean x on the other side. That becomes negative 2x minus 1 half. And again, we're going to square both sides. But this time, things aren't going to be super nice. But it's still going to be okay. And now, we're going to separate the cases here. And now we get... You can think of this as 2x plus 1 half squared. It's kind of easier to look at it that way. 4x squared plus 2x plus 1 fourth. Nice. Let's put everything on the same side. 5x squared plus 2x minus 3 fourths equals 0. Uh-oh, 3 fourths came up again. Now you can go ahead and multiply both sides by 4. If you're like me, I don't like fractions. Nobody likes fractions. Sorry, fractions. No offense. And then from here x becomes negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 64, minus 4ac, which is 240. That's a 284, I think, if I didn't make a mistake. Divide by 2a. Uh, 284 is 71 times 4. So 71 is prime. We can take out a 2. That gives us negative 8 plus minus 2 root 71 divided by 40 which we can write as negative 4 plus minus root 71 over 20. We can divide everything by 2, and that's all we can do because we can't simplify any further. So it looks like there are four solutions, but one of them is, I think, problematic. You know why? Because when we wrote our expression, we had to make sure that uh, nothing is negative. Nothing negative is equal to a uh, perfect square. In other words, we have to stay within the domain. And one condition to stay within the domain is 1 minus x squared, because that was under the radical. Remember, it needs to be that, so x squared needs to be less than or equal to 1. But if you think about one of the solutions, I believe it's this one. If you square this, this is actually going to be the same thing as this number squared 
and that number is probably going to be greater than 1. I'm not exactly sure because square root of 71 is about... I don't think so, though, right? Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. The graph will tell the whole story. Ta-da-da-da, here's the graph of these two functions, which I find pretty interesting. This almost seems like they're tangent, but that's not the case. They intersect at two points, but that's a total of three points. Let's take a look at Wolfram Alpha results. Ta-da! Wait a minute. Why are those results different? Did I mess up on one of the solutions? Possibly. Maybe I made a mistake. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.